Hi, I am Michelle Low. I'm a New York-based gallerist. I'm also hosting a weekly virtual artist interview for Golden Door exhibition. Golden Door is currently on view at Silver Mine Art Center, which is located in New Canaan, Connecticut. The exhibition tells a story of becoming American and being American by 10 artists originally came from different parts of the world. So today I'm speaking with Mohamed Hafaz. You are based in Connecticut right now. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. And before we start our conversation, I would like to play a short video. I think it serves a very good introduction for us and our audience to know a little bit about your work and who you are. I understand you were born in Syria and grew up in Saudi Arabia and educated in the US. So it's already a very dynamic background. Correct. And you also is uh, currently practicing both art and architecture. Mm -hmm. So that's also wearing multiple hats. It's very interesting, dynamic person. And the work has been featured in many publications, including the New Yorker, New York Times, Guardian, and many others. So let me share my screen. Yeah. My name is Mohammed Hafez. I am a professional architect and an artist. My most recent work, titled Baggage Series, is influenced by forced migrants packing all their lives and emotions in suitcases and leaving everything behind. My work is not only about Syria. The concept of the loss of home is a universal human experience. The destruction in Syria has led to a massive refugee crisis that we all have witnessed. This crisis has become even more personal to me when I've learned that my brother-in-law has become a refugee in Europe. My work has been and always will be incredibly personal. What I'd like for people to take away from my work beyond experiencing the physical form of destruction is to feel the common humanity amongst all of us. The perfect way for us to really get to know more about your work and understand the pieces. So I am sharing my screen on these three pieces that's included in the Silver Mine exhibition. Um, Mahamu, I'm really touched by the video and the, your piece, you know, that you compound a lot of things into it, but the end result is also something that's fine art for people to appreciate and to ponder, to wondering. So tell us a little bit about how you start, began the series and how do you incorporate your architecture and art both background into making them? Sure. I, you know, for many years I did this art um, in uh, complete secret. You know, I was a, an architect for 12 years, but also simultaneously witnessing a lot of uh, political changes, a lot of wars, a lot of conflicts uh, in the Middle East, where I originally come from, uh, while maintaining, you know, uh, a, trying to maintain a simple life and uh, a mindset to actually go about your daily work and design buildings and uh, live a normal life in the United States. So this, um, um, you know, the the two faces of the same uh, person, it's, uh, it, become, it becomes very uh, emotional and becomes very troublesome uh, to any individual, 
uh, you know, I was lucky to have a creative outlet for many years uh, to have this interest in art and to always practice art um, away from the lights, away from uh, what people see and know about me. So, you know, as I, uh, you know, travel around and uh, in my business suit and so on, you always catch what uh, the societies are reflecting uh, upon and what they're reacting on. Most people perhaps did not know my background as a Syrian uh, uh, Muslim Middle Eastern uh, person, but they knew me as the uh, modern uh, architect. And as you saw in the video, uh, that was very while ago. I looked a lot younger, no beard, uh, suit, and so on. So that was the um, the face many people saw. And so I became interested in the uh, word baggage, both. Uh, physically and emotionally. What is the baggage that we all carry around us and uh, as we uh, navigate our daily professions and lives. Um, and with that, you know, uh, baggage, suitcases, uh, I became very interested in that because it's a, it's a global uh, uh, term that many people can understand. Uh, you don't need to be from our region to understand the emotional baggage that we all uh, carry. We all have some some emotions, some memories. And so the best tool to for an artist to actually highlight the common denominator and the human experience between um, his uh, culture and other people um, is to use a very uh, universal tool. And that's, that's why I started interested, getting interested in the suitcases. And I felt, you know, for, for many years that I'm carrying all these emotions inside my suitcases, closing it up and only showing it in, uh, you know, inside my house. If that answers your question. Okay, uh, I just want to show people this work from more like a three-dimensional way. Please continue. Um, yeah, and as you can see, the a lot of you know, because I am an architect, the tools at hand here are uh, model-making tools. Uh, I'm not a painter by uh, training. I am trained to be an uh, an architect, and you know. By the blessing of God, I have an eye for detail and uh, uh, trying to make the artworks be super realistic. Um, and that's what people get most attached to is, is the abundance of, of detail in these uh, pieces. You know, there's two sides of this. First, um, there's, you know, the, what the artist gets out of it is uh, I personally live in this uh, uh, nostalgic uh, life creative life uh, as an artist this is my refuge I escape from my artwork so in reality uh, when I am making these pieces I am completely in the zone uh, after I finish them after six or seven or eight months um, I barely remember 40 percent of the details that went into them uh, the other 60 percent is uh, uh, really ambiguous to me or how it came together and how do you find these uh, uh, objects? Are they actual physical objects that you, because they seem like a miniature version of the actual objects you might use for a, a, a building? Yeah, so, um, you know, as an architect, I, in these pieces, I create uh, everything architectural. You see floors, ceilings, and walls, windows, doors, I, I create those. Uh, when it comes to all the gingerbread that comes over them um, and the, uh, the, the details, uh, it's all found objects uh, that I collect. I have a huge uh, collection in my studio of everything under the sun, um, from metals to plastic to shreds to old radio parts to old bulbs to dried plants. Um, you know, and, and it's what helps me a lot is, um, you know, when you find these uh, objects in nature or wherever, um, you have a conversation with, with each object of what can you be in a miniature scale. 
uh, they might be an earring originally, but in my things, uh, they can be a perfect chandelier or a perfect um, satellite dish, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, that conversation is always happening. And of course, the, the surprise of digging into my bins and buckets and finding these objects on the spot and putting them in my artwork is very fulfilling for any artist. But by the same token, it, it doesn't give you that big sense of uh, authorship either. Because, you know, you're just a chef in the kitchen that's trying to put many ingredients uh, together, but you cannot take credit for uh, everything, how it comes together or how well or does not uh, 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 come together. So a lot of these pieces, I work on them simultaneously. I never work on a single piece at the same time. Uh, there are always in my studio anywhere from six to seven pieces that are uh, being worked on. So my uh, mental memory being committed to each piece is very little uh, because I am being jumping from one to the other, trying to keep a fresh eye. So sometimes uh, by the time I come back to the first piece, four months or five months have lapsed. And I look at the piece with a fresh eye, uh, noticing that there are areas that need the more detail and so on. And that's intentional. You know, I don't try to remember much of the piece because and that's one of the common questions I use where we get, how do you know a piece is finished? And I say, you know, uh, when I come back to these pieces and you take a phone camera and you put it close by and you shoot a, a photo, show it somebody and they think it's a real place and in the world, that's when the work is done. If there's an area that still is uh, showing that it, it lacks detail or needs more detail, then we need to you know, work on that a little bit more. And I noticed that you, you also mentioned in various of interviews this, the suitcase. This is such a significant element of the series with the suitcase, um, the baggage series. And when we think about you know, refugees, but it also makes me think about our current situation and the COVID, where we felt that we're so confined in one place, mm -hmm. and we also have this kind of urgency to get ready to go, so everything needs to be in the suitcase. Can right. you tell us a little bit more about how, you know, the current situation COVID has in impact or influence your art making and architectural practice? Well, well uh, it's, it's amazing how fragile our lives are. It's amazing how uh, um, repetitive life can be, you know, but in different flavors. So when these pieces were made, uh, most people uh, did not relate to the pains of uh, a Syrian refugee or African refugee or so on because Nobody had felt that, you know, what it means to pack up your life, what it means to be uh, ready to, to go at, a, at any, uh, you know, moment. And that gives, um, uh, that gives ways for many politicians to use that against uh, migrants by fear mongering and xenophobic tactics that become policies that eventually affect our lives. So I believe that an artist is an ambassador of his own culture, uh, of his own people, and he has or she has the responsibility uh, to, to deliver that pain uh, in a language that most people uh, can understand. Now, fast forward after COVID, you know, it, it's, it's much easier to relate to that pain now that we are all now collectively traumatized and have experienced something. Uh, so, and this is not very different from somebody that's having to grab their loved ones uh, and photos and whatever memories they have because the fires in California are two meters away and they have to evacuate the house and they come back to a house that is ashes. You know, the human experience of loss is not very different from somebody that is fleeing uh, uh, an army coming into the uh, village. So, yes, the circumstances might be different, but you build empathy and you build uh, at least some sort of understanding between cultures in divided times in during xenophobic times uh, so we don't get to a point where you see another travel ban that uh, 
thinks millions of people based on their religion or their passport color um, or, or their ethnicity, you know? So uh, these are topics that I'm very, very interested in. And that's why I use these global and universal objects to uh, paint a common denominator between uh, the different experiences of, you know, quote unquote, my people and, and uh, uh, the other, you know, ways. And of course, that's a, that's a very fluffy statement because I am now uh, an American citizen. I've lived here more adult years uh, in my life anywhere else than uh, than anywhere else in the world. Um, I understand the, the tactics, I understand the fear-mongering tactics and policies in this nation. We've seen it so many times. Today's flavors are immigrants and refugees and Mexicans and so on. Uh, tomorrow's flavor, who, who knows? Uh, my responsibility as an artist is uh, to have some activism behind my work and to educate calmly and, and uh, gently through art so that we stop uh, supporting folks that are dividing us. We are one nation um, and uh, we're all uh, in this, whether we're uh, traumatized by COVID, by climate change, by... The world is no longer, uh, you know, a divided uh, big continents. You know, with the technology and the lives we live in, we're all in one village, so um, one small village called Earth. So we either uh, care for ourselves as a collective living on this. Um, the mindset that we are us versus them uh, needs to go and needs to be lethal. Of course, this is all flowery words that I'm uh, saying and it might sound very uh, cliche to a lot of uh, people, but unfortunately, this is the world we are living in. We are living in a divided society. We are living in a xenophobic times. We are living in a times where People are trying to get elected into powerful uh, spots in society based on these tactics. And so as simplistic as this might sound, it's really as crucial uh, as what we need today to bring.